Yeah, we left off bottom paragraph. We're in the Chovos Alavavos. Bottom paragraph, 648. Ubo Nemar. He had said a person was conditioned, let's say, to lie, to slander, to do many not good things. It's not simple to do tshuva. Of course, to overcome bad habits is nearly impossible, very difficult. But Nemar Vimbo Liro Shov Yidabra Libo Yikpots Oven Lo. He says, If one of them comes to see me, he utters empty words while his heart harbors evil. If you see a thief, you befriend him. You keep company with adulterers. Okay. He says, what's even more difficult? Overcoming bad habits is very difficult to tshuva. What's he says, what's even more difficult than that? Yeah, there's a person's a person's machti sarabim. Understand? Yerav ben Avot is the, the classical. No one outdid him. Baruch Hashem. Choti machti sarabim. He sinned and he caused others to sin. Right? It says Moshe Rabbeinu was zocha v'zika sarabim. The antithesis of Moshe was Yerav ben Avot. It was a chote of machti sarabi. So all the people who did idolatry, he, he was liable. He, he, was, he was the cause. So let's say a person misled many people, caused many people to go astray. And he actually compelled them to believe in whatever, whatever that is, this false belief. He, was, he, he strayed and he caused others to stray. You know, the Gemara says, I'm so him. That a person is a Shono Pirish, a person who was an observant Jew, he studied, and he gave it up. That person usually hates religion with a passion. Present. Mm-hmm. Why? So Rashi explains it. So him, because he knows what everybody says about him. You understand? A person doesn't know anything. He doesn't know anything. But a person who learned and now he's given it up, so how do people look at him? They look at him as a bad guy. I'm a bad guy. I'm going to teach you people. And therefore he goes out of spite to do whatever he can to bring about the greatest level of damage. So some people, because they have a certain position, they want to, you know, also you have it in Tochacha. There's, there's various levels. The person doesn't do, does, doesn't allow others to do. He hates those who do. It goes from bad to worse over there. So there's seven levels of, 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 of regression. The token Chukosai, over there. V'tov iso. Cholashi Yosef v'omam amidim bo Yosef avoni v'ichofel. And the more people believe in this false belief, his sin becomes more intensified. Moshe Omer abzin z'chernu v'roch cholam z'akas ha-rabim echid bo'ol yodo. That's Moshe Rabbeinu. Cholam machti es-ha-rabim e maspikim yodo l'asos tshuva. V'omru yorovam choto v'echti es-ha-rabim because Yerob ben Nevot, he sinned and he caused others to sin. He did not allow them to go to the base of Migdash. He built golden calves. He said, go worship the calves. Don't go to the base of Migdash. Chet Rab Tolui. All those who sinned with idolatry, he's culpable for every one of those people. Shenema al-chatos Yerob ma-shechotov shehichti Yisrael. It's what he sinned and he caused them to sin. There's a, there's a famous story with uh, Rabbi Shul Leib Diskin. Shub Leib Diskin. So um, it was already he was older, and this uh, he, he was in Europe. He was still in Europe. He was he was he was the Briska Rob before the Salvations came to Brisk. Rabbi Shmuel Leib Diskin. And um, one day a woman comes with her father, totally broken, emotionally broken, devastated. And um, he asks him, well, what, "What exactly is the problem?" So he tells over the story that when he was younger. He was a person who was a heretic, and he wrote a certain work that it, it took on like fire. And whoever would read this this work that he offered would become an api, would become a apicorus, would cast away the religion. And thousands of people read his read his work, 
was so popular among the, you know, the new thinkers, the free thinkers, thousands of Jews abandoned the Yiddishkeit because of him, because of this book that he had written. As he got old, he realized that everything was just purely his ego, and he refuted everything he wrote. But what about all the damage they did? Mm. All the people that he corrupted, and their lives and their families' lives are, are gone forever. How does he do tshuva? He's devastated. And that's what he came to the Maral Disk and asked him. How does he do tshuva? It wasn't simple. It wasn't simple. He told him whatever he told him. But, you know, how do you do it? You can't do it. You know, years, years ago, these two years, in the 50s, when you were by mitzvah or early 60s, Hebrew Publishing Company put out a book. It was called um, Azabel's uh, Jewish Something. It, had, it was like Jewish folklore. It's a book on Jewish folklore. It had pictures in it, pictures of Israel, different things in it. I don't know if you remember what it was. It's called Azab, A U S B A B E L, folklore, Jewish folklore. That's what it was. So there they had a story. They had all kinds of things in it. They had a story where a person comes to a Hasidish Rebbe and asks him, he, has, he wants the truth to speak in Moshe Hara. And there's nobody this man didn't speak about. So he says, okay. He says, I'm going to explain you how to do it. So he first he tells him to take a pillow that was filled with feathers, cut it open, and go and open the window and shake it out the window. The wind blows, blows the feathers all, all over the town, all over the village. He says, okay. He says, no, no go, go gather the feathers. <laughs> that's what the Rebbe says to this person. He says, that's that. Now you understand how serious it is. How, how, how do you go? All the people, you don't even know who you spoke about, and you have to go to each one and ask forgiveness. It's, a, it's an impossibility. That, that's how serious it is. So over here, a person says, Now how do you bring people back? Even if you want to bring them back, they said, look, don't tell me what it is. I understand what it is. You know, you, you've showed me the light, I'm out the door. So, and the petty plenty of people have bad influences, very bad influences. Had a story. Start the morning in a second. I used to give a share in Teaneck many years ago, every other, every other week, in people's houses on certain subject matters. And the subject I spoke about was is there a place for fanatic fanaticism in Judaism? That was the topic. You know, so, and I, it was in somebody's home. I think it was in Rick, Rick Lobel's home. That's where the, that share was given. People came from the community, and I started, you know, with the Pasuk, with the Gemara, we have a Shulchan Aruch, whatever it was, and there was a certain woman living in the community, whether she lives there now, I'm not sure, and she was the so-called Jewish trendsetter of what Orthodox Jewry is, Judaism is, and she herself was off. She didn't behave properly as, as an Orthodox woman, but she came from a religious family, and her father was this, this, and that, and she was the trendsetter. So I started to say to Shear, I didn't know who she was, what she was, and she was, was exposed for not being the so-called authentic. Uh, that's not a representation of authentic orthodoxy, orthodox Judaism. So she gets up and she says, the rabbi is wrong. She got up like, she, like a mad woman. The rabbi is wrong. What he's saying has no basis to it. So I said to her, I said, look, you have a question, ask a question. Yes, of course, I'll give you an answer. But just to say I'm wrong, where I just presented facts and a basis for whatever I said, what do you mean I'm wrong? I'm wrong because you disagree? That's not a basis that I'm wrong. Mm -hmm. Because she was exposed. You know, she was the, when I say modern, I'm putting it mildly, what modern was. But she came from this religious home, and many of the people up were, didn't know any better. And she was the example, she was the model for them, what, what it's so called. That's Choti Machtis Arabim. I like to tell the story which is close to home. I don't want you to know what it is. Englewood. It's one individual.
can have a positive experience. They can be very successful. Yeah. You say arrogance. It's That's their problem. They're arrogant. They're arrogant. Yeah. So rude and arrogant. They wouldn't have the few bucks in their pockets, you know. They wouldn't be. Able, they wouldn't be on their high horses. Of course not. The eight are. Of course, it's not uncommon. You just need an excuse. You need an excuse to be out the door. You need an excuse to be out the door. That's it. Let me ask a question. Anytime anybody sins, you'd say you somehow have to find some level of justification to do the wrong thing. Why? Why do you need any justification? Because the answer is because you don't want to, you, you don't want to have any guilt. It's a guilt issue. It's the rabbi. It's this. But what did God say? Let's, but what did God say? Forget about what the rabbi says. Did the rabbi create his own religion over here? Okay, 100%. You better speak to the shatchan. Okay. <laughs> okay.